Immigration issues have been at the forefront of the political conversation since the beginning of the Trump administration, and many of the stories we've heard about immigrant communities in America haven't always been happy ones. But that's not necessarily the case in the new book, No One Can Pronounce My Name. The novel explores the lives of Indian Americans in suburban Cleveland as they straddle the line between Eastern and Western cultures. The author of that book, Rakesh Setyal, joins me now. He's also the author of the award-winning novel, Blue Boy. Rakesh, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. So this book is set in Cleveland. You yes. are from Cincinnati. That's right. Why was it important for you to set this book in the Midwest? Uh, I, you know, I think that the Midwest oftentimes can represent a place where people have manners of, uh, of a really refined sort. And there's a lot of humor in those manners because oftentimes there's subtext to what they're saying and they don't feel like they can just come right, right out and say it. So I like the idea of drawing upon my experience and in Infusing it with some of that humor that comes from that, yeah. that misunderstanding. And, and at one point, one of the characters, Ranjina, ponders the idea that real life stories often find their way into fiction. So, how much of your own experience mm -hmm. as the child of immigrant parents did you incorporate into this book? Well, in my first book, Blue Boy, that was very much a coming of age story. So, it felt like I drew a great deal from my personal experience, especially when it came to just setting the stage for what it felt like for a person who was growing up in the Midwest. In this one, it I definitely felt a subtler approach to how I was thinking about the community in which I grew up. And, and with the first book, I was really looking through the lens of myself as a child. And in this, I almost felt like I was affording myself the opportunity to look through the eyes of the parents who were around me. So that was a great role playing game for me to look back and see what they might have been thinking when I was younger. Mm, kind of a different perspective. Yes, then. Yeah. So this novel goes beyond, though, the immigrant experience and delves into that universal theme of loneliness. Mm -hmm. Why did you want to include that? I often think that loneliness is a kind of stigmatized emotion or state that people think of it as being really negative negative and destructive. And that's not to say that it doesn't come from a place of sadness for a lot of people. But oftentimes, when we're alone, that's when we do our most productive thinking. It's when we take stock of our lives and what we really value. So I really wanted to explore the idea of people who felt alone and then a friendship that happened where their loneliness had prepared them for meeting somebody with whom they'd have a connection. And that would be a lovely thing in the end. Hmm. You also highlight the LGBTQ community in this book. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, being a queer person myself, you know, actually, in December, uh, my boy friend then at four years and I decided to go and get married at City Hall because we wanted to honor the Obama administration and everything they had done for people in our community. And I think now these stories are all the more important because I think when we see some of the political cli climate and what we're in right now, that people can forget that there are these people who have long-standing relationships and productive and meaningful relationships and that their visibility is all the more important now while we're in this moment. You mentioned the political climate. You started writing this book years ago. Mm -hmm. Do you think you would have had a different approach if you had written it post-2016 presidential you election. You know, I, I think, I, I thought about that while I was revising, because in the midst of my revision, the election happened. But if anything, it actually reinforced the themes that I was looking at, which are the ideas that um, listening to other people and hearing their personal stories are, are what's going to help us in the end. I mean, I think what I like to say is that people can make generalizations about ethnic communities, but actually the way change happens is by listening to particular people and their specific stories. And that's what writing fiction allows you to do. It allows you to tell a really specific story and then have that mean something to other people. So I, I don't think it necessarily changed. I think it got reinforced for that to make me all the prouder of the work that I was doing. So when you talk about uh, growing up in the Midwest as a child of Indian immigrants, I understand you have a funny story to tell about your mom and a giant Barbie doll? Oh, yes. My mother loves Barbie dolls. Okay. Uh, she thinks they're like amazing pieces of Americana. And my dad actually once gave her, for their anniversary, a, a gigantic Barbie doll. Kind of, it's called a My Size Barbie doll. And it was a Rapunzel doll with a pink chiffon and gold lame gown. Um, and it's still in our house. Uh, my mother, my dad gave it to my mom in a glass case, actually. So it's still in our house. And everybody assumes it's mine. They don't, they don't assume it's my mom's. <laughs> All right, well, you certainly don't hear about that every day. <laughs> no. Rakesh said, y'all, the book is called No One Can Pronounce My Name. Rakesh, thanks so much for your time. Thanks really so appreciate much for it. Having me.